Fallopian tube disorders are a variety of issues that can cause them. Basically, the fallopian tubes, we have two fallopian tubes that are connected to the uterus. They are vital for the egg and sperm to meet at the end of the fallopian tube, and then the embryo, which is a fertilized egg, rolls through the fallopian tube and lands safely in the uterus. The reasons the fallopian tubes can get impacted include sexually transmitted diseases, endometriosis, prior appendicitis, surgeries for a variety of reasons can also impair or impact the fallopian tubes, and unknown reasons including salpingitis ischema nodosa and endosalpingiosis, if a patient ever had an ectopic pregnancy, which can be increased with a history of smoking, as well as a variety of other factors. So the fallopian tubes are very delicate, and we use everything in our power to either surgically fix them, or if they're completely swollen, which is called a hydrosalpinx, and the inside of the fallopian tube is so damaged that it impairs the ability of even in vitro fertilization to be successful, then a very difficult decision has to be made for the patient, which is that perhaps it is better to remove both fallopian tubes if they have a significant hydrosalpinx. And that surgery is done with a laparoscopy, which is a small camera in through the belly button, and carefully we remove or clip the fallopian tubes to prevent the fluid which is in the fallopian tubes from injuring the embryos which can be placed in for in vitro fertilization. It can actually decrease our success by 50%. And so it is actually very smart to consider having the procedure done to remove them ahead of time. In addition, if a patient had a prior ectopic pregnancy or in a pregnancy that landed and stuck in the fallopian tube, which can be dangerous for a patient, we are always on red alert to be cautious to try our best to prevent this in the future. And there in the consultation, we can go over different strategies to help optimize the fallopian tubes. Up to one third of women struggling with infertility have an issue with their fallopian tubes. How do we check this? We can order an X-ray called an HSG, hysterosalpingogram, which is a very helpful tool as a diagnostic test to check for the fallopian tube's ability to be open or swollen as well as little issues that we can see when we look at the images. In addition, we can do an ultrasound, which on occasion can detect a swollen fallopian tube or a hydrosalpinx. There's a variety of little factors we can see on the ultrasound, especially when it is swollen or full of fluid. Ultrasound can also detect a tubo-ovarian abscess, which is a significant infection, which is led by pelvic inflammatory disease that leads to the fallopian tube and ovary being full of infectious agents that needs antibiotics promptly and treatment immediately. In addition, we can also use laparoscopy to check on a person's fallopian tubes. We can inject blue dye through the cervix and watch the blue dye squirt out of the fallopian tubes on each side and take pictures to verify that both fallopian tubes are open and healthy. This dye is not damaging at all and has been shown to be safe to use to check on the fallopian tubes. And lastly, we will do everything in our power to help either fix the fallopian tubes or provide the best strategy to have the successful in vitro fertilization happen for a healthy full-term baby. We at SCRC do our best to optimize the care of every patient.